All right, folks, my name is Adam, and I like to make tiny, nerdy things. And Ohana means family, and family means nobody is left behind or forgotten. So to make sure you don't forget about Stitch, I'm going to sear him into your memory in the only way I know how. By making a poorly designed, realistic version of a beloved Disney character. Now my first thought was to make an adorable, fluffy looking, chubby little cherub shaped blue alien, but I figured that's not really my style. No, I tend towards the only slightly recognizable recreations using unrelated creatures as a template. So in sticking with that train of thought, I figured what better body for our little blue friend than a straight up gorilla. To that end, I built myself an all aluminium armature body wrapped in foil to bulk out the dimensions a bit, then I can start slapping a top layer of clay on, well, on top. I like to work in steps, since that's kind of how making stuff works, and the first clay related step is to get a general shape shaped out. I don't worry too much about definition at this point, instead I'm focusing on making sure all the body parts are roughly equal in size to one another, and are at least sorta, somewhat, kind of a little bit anatomically correct. Also, I think it'd be kind of funny if you had a great big pot belly. And once I've built up the base layer of clay to a point where the majority of the foil is covered and I'm happy enough with the overall shape, I can start building up the detail by adding smaller and more strategically placed lumps of clay to bring a bit more definition to the musculature. Once I've got the clay in place and the soft form figured out, I'll come back with a variety of tools and start to cut and refine the progressively finer muscly bits. At this point, I figured out how the pose is going to be set up so I can start to shape the muscles and skin so that it more accurately reflects the movement of his body. For instance, I'm going to have Stitch reaching up with his left arm and prepared for a swipe so the muscles of his left side need to be pulled back while his right side is reaching forward for balance. And then the same concept gets reflected to his chest with the left pec stretching out while the right bunches up over his arm. With the larger muscles figured out, I can carry that same stretchy muscle principle of anatomy through to his limbs to highlight the stretch in his big monkey muscles. For his hands, I'll stick with the true to origin four finger design, but instead of a standard monkey paw, I thought it might look a little bit better if he had a kind of segmented bear paw kind of thing. Then I'll poke some little divots into his little digits, then jam some pre-baked spiky dealies into the tips before repeating this entire process for the rest of his hands and feet. Before I bake the body and lock all the detail in place, I want to add some final touches, starting with some extra skin folds to really highlight the weight of his belly, and of course I need to add his adorable little tail. Then I can give the whole body a once over with some isopropyl alcohol to smooth out any of the imperfections and remove fingerprints, and it's into the oven to bake while I get to work on his head. His head starts out as a mushroom cap that I'll press two little thumb sized indents onto then round out and pop two little clay buttons into. Then a series of varying sized wormy deedlies will thicken up the eyelids and eyebrows and other eye related parts and help to give Stitch a bit more of a yelly Stitch face. Before adding some chunky cheek pieces and a little nose indent followed by a great big eye catching schnoz. Some wrinkly dealies on top of the nose will help blend it into the forehead and I'll take a minute to outline the separation between his eyes and the rest of his head. I'm still figuring out the static fur to facial detail ratio, so it's possible that most of this detail is going to be hidden by the end, but I figure why not err on the side of too much detail. I've attached a flattened ball of clay to the bottom of my mushroom, then pulled it down to form his mouth and I can blend the pieces together and remove some of the excess inside to create a more natural looking mouth hole. Then I can fill this natural looking mouth hole with some pre-baked teethy dealies. A little bacon bond will help me stick my head onto the body and then I can blend the two sections together. To make a tongue, I'll roll a little ball of clay and smoosh it into a tongue-like shape, then carve a line down the middle, add some kinda gross tongue-like texture, and then I can jam it into his mouth. 
To make the ears, I'll take a similar ball of clay, but smoosh it flat and use a couple different ball styluses to round out the edges and add some wrinkly ear details before cutting those patented stitch ear nicks out. Then I can smoosh it into place on the side of his head. Now I realize they were a bit too floppy to support themselves, so I jammed a couple lengths of armature wire into the base of his ears to help support the clay while it cures in the oven. However, once it's all baked, I can remove the wires and the air should remain nice and springy. Otherwise, that's the sculpting done and I can get on to the painting. I'll start by airbrushing the inside of his mouth and ears with a white base coat to make the following pinks, reds, and terracotta coats cover a little bit better. Then I can paint all his teeth and toenails with a bone white base coat before coming back with a sepia wash to dirty them all up and give a bit of detail. Then I'll give his eyes a black base coat and I can start to mask off all the previously painted parts so that I can do the rest of the painting by way of haphazard airbrushing. The ears will get a nice pink base coat followed by a couple coats of very thin red and purple washes to make them look extra veiny. Then I can give the rest of the body a full once over with a stitch blue base coat. To add some variation, I'll come back and hit a few of the spots with a lighter shade of blue before finally hitting all the creases and crevices and fat folds with a dark blue wash. Then I can paint his nose black and do the same for the pads on his front paws before using a sponge to add a bit of grey to make it look a little less one tone. Otherwise, that's the painting finished and I can get to work on the fur. To make my fur, I'll combine unequal parts of blue and white static grass until I've got a slightly lighter blue that's closer to the color of my blue paint base coat. Now in the past, I've used a static box to add the grass to my models, but I actually don't want an even coat this time since I think it would look better if it was kinda scraggly. So instead of the magic box, I'm just gonna use this magic wand. And instead of carefully applying the glue with a brush, I'm just gonna go ham with an aerosol. My intention was that the aerosol wouldn't give me as clean a coat as the brush had in the past, leaving me with a much messier, patchier looking coat. But of course, the exact opposite happened, and I ended up with a frustratingly good initial layer of fur. So to help scruffy it up a bit, I sprayed little blobs of adhesive onto some choice sections to add some extra layers of blue fur. And once it's had enough time to dry, I can pull all the sticky tack out of all the various orifices. Last but not least, I'll give the nose and mouth a bit of shine with a coat of gloss varnish, the eyes get a layer of resin, and as a final touch I'll use some goopy clear glue to give Stitch a bit of a drooly salivating mouth. Otherwise, that's us finished and on to the glamour shots. As always, a big ol' thank you to my lovely patronizers, and a very special thank you to my newest of patronizers, Heather Steele, Helen Microbisexual, Peter Kidwell, J. Paul Newhouse, Ilona, Jose B., Mitch Erickson, Zalmus, and Henchworm. You are the big beefy blue buttocks that keep this channel upright. If you have any childhood memories that you want turned into unintentionally horrifying sculptures, then let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, we'll um, see you next time. Cheers.